there's no particular way to get the templates. Um, the, what you need, the, the key is this tag. So if you're in, oops, I shouldn't touch that. If you remember capital V U, capital T template, um, and you search for capital, you search for capital V U, capital T template, and then do advanced search and look for sometimes they're system tippers, sometimes they're standard. Um, it doesn't really matter, but that's how you'll find some other templates. Okay. The key part about a template is the first line, which says any tiddlers that match my filter, apply this template to. And if it doesn't match my filter, skip it. So, it's, so if you think, if you imagine your um, tiddlers being performed the same way, if you think of the web as a performance medium, um, are you looking strangely Paul, like I've never heard such an idea. How's the web performance medium? How's the web a performance? How does it exist? Right now, we'll get metaphysical for three minutes. In your mind, are web pages out there waiting to be viewed? Or are the components of web pages out there waiting for you to ask them? To perform for you. It's so out there on the server waiting for a user to call upon it. And once the user calls upon it, it shows itself. Yeah, it used to be that way a little bit, but the web, the HTML code is a series of requests to servers, plural. When you type in HTTP colon slash slash bit.do slash design right, because why would you type anything else? Or when you type in, you know, HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com, you are asking a server to perform for you. And it goes and says, oh, Paul wants me to display my page. And it goes and gets all the different objects and makes a performance for you and presents it to you on your screen. It's like performance media like that. Did that performance of that page exist before you sent the request? Yes and no. Hmm? Yes, it, no. It didn't exist because it's done in the moment. <clears throat> if Paul asks for a page and I ask for a page on, the, on a different computer at the exact same time. Are we both seeing the exact same performance? Or are we seeing different performances? I told you it was going to get. Same. Hmm? Same. Yeah, I think they're different. It depends on your profile that you set up on your computer. Yeah. Both it's exactly. Different. It depends on a lot of stuff. They're not the same. The same that both of you sitting there, all four of you in this class, are not getting the same performance from me. You're getting different because it depends on where you're sitting, it depends on what you bring to the performance, your background, your experience, your tolerance. <laughs> right, so everybody, so in, so in that way, the web is like a performance medium. Um, and so when you listen to a class lecture, when you ask for a web page, it goes through a filter. So for example, Cassandra, I'm just going to teach you mercilessly today, okay? Cassandra, when she sees this, it goes through her filter that then blocks further processing of it. She has a filter that's like a, I don't know, it's a um, it's firewall. It's a complexity filter. She won't look at text, that's text, if you will, that has symbols. It's got, as soon as she sees this angle bracket dollar sign, her filter has shut down and won't process it anymore. Okay, now, on the other hand, this filter is asking questions not of Cassandra, but of Tiddlers. So as every Tiddler passes through, okay, so when, the way that Tiddly Wiki works, it's a single page HTML file. You send a request to the server, wherever it's stored. Your, if it's on your hard drive, you send the request from your browser to your hard drive. Pull in this file, and every Tiddler is created. Or, or it's, it's, it, the HTML code is read into memory, and it's ready for you to present, to ask. 
And when you ask a tiddler to be presented to you by opening a tiddler, it says, oh, okay, I'm ready to go. Checks all its templates, and if it finds a template that matches it, it says, I'll use it. And it always finds a template that matches it because it always goes through view template. If you want to change the way tiddlers look in everything, change view template. Like every tiddler has some certain shared characteristics, like this one has these borders and all that crap. Actually, what we're in now is called edit template is governing what we're seeing now because we're editing. When you're viewing a template, view, and then the whole page is called page template. Um, we're gonna use templates because I think this notion of templating is key to hypertext. We're gonna use templates, basically only view templates. You're welcome to do whatever you want, but I'm gonna ask you to think about using view templates and view templates that map certain objects on the basis of their tag. So I think everything of yours is tagged plant or something. Yours might get tagged tweet. Yours might get tagged photo. Um, grab the top the name of this template. Just copy that. And then under the template, right under on line two, type um, paste. And then close it in square brackets. Two square brackets, double square brackets, I should have said. And then put a break, um, carrot, or you know the angle bracket. Which way? Um, you want to open it, open it, br, and close it. Okay. So what that will do as a technique is put the name of the template in all your tiddlers that match it. So to answer your question, how do you find your template quickly? Just put it in every tiddler. And when you're done, take that line out because that's good for writing code. And debugging. Um, you can, instead of an BR, try an HR. That'll put a horizontal rule under it. And you'll know exactly where your stuff starts. Okay. Um, so and you'll see that all he does is puts his title, the object is up, and then he calls this macro called nav. So the rest, everything else happens in the macro called nav. Okay. That's code that I wasn't going to teach but it's really cool what he's doing this c tag thing is i can't remember where that comes from but i've used it before um what that does is you say okay every and this is the tagging up it says at the pinnacle of my pyramid which i think is end item scroll down the pyramid get to the media types da 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 get scroll there and then sift through all those layers and get all the tags and have that available and that's how it makes that now work. And so seeing that, how you want to kind of be able to build that tree, that's what you might miss by using a black box. You might sort of miss that you've got this inherent structure. And when you want to change that structure, you're, you're sort of, you've lost touch a little bit with your data. So it's coming, you know, you're, you're building your stuff, your text, you're going through a black box, it's coming into the medium, and you want to massage it. And, really know it well. I don't know. Um, for me at least, I need I, those black boxes and I try to, but like the CDS to JSON is sort of a black box, but I can see what it's doing. And I guess yours is the same, right? Because you know, you can see what comes in and what goes out. You don't need to know how it does that. Okay. Yeah, okay. It might be fine. Um, so, save this. And to see if your changes worked, um, oh, edit this again and tag it with critique. Um, capital C, there it is. Yeah. And so um, that's another way to do stuff. You can put your tags on things when you want to find them. So then you can just go back to critique and there should be a link to um, base value clone. Now you'll see why I created a clone. And here's the name of the template. So you, because we edited the template, it shows up on face value clone. Does that make sense? You got lost there, right? OK. See this line here? It's got the name of the file. Can you go back to the, can you go to that? 
Sandra, edit that. And on line two, the line you were working on before, um, in the very front of it, put some, put another, put some more text in there. Like this template is called. Okay, now where are you going to see that text? You'll definitely see it in this fiddler, yes. Which other one? Yeah. Any fiddler that is tagged with end item is going to have this line because we open it up. All the tiddlers are floating around, and and what do you know about tiddlers? You know that they have tags, and the tiddler asks questions of every template when it's asked to perform. So the tiddler, as it's getting ready to perform, it says, and I'm probably wrong about exactly what it says. Jeremy probably knows precisely what order it does these steps in, because it matters. <laughs> But for our purposes, it doesn't matter. The tiddler's going to say, okay, who am I? What do I know? Oh, I'm tagged end item. Are there any tiddlers that are asking for tiddlers tagged with end item? Oh, there's one. I'll use that template. Is this a way of mass editing tiddlers? Pardon? Is this a way of mass editing tiddlers? This is so much not a way of mass editing tiddlers. But it's such a perfect question because you're so close to exactly what it is. You're not editing the tiddler, you're not changing the source. If it was, then we'd be talking about the object tiddlers. What you're doing is this activity of hypertextualization of templating. It's a way of asking, of telling tiddlers, giving them presentation instructions without the content. So there's no content in this. Although you can put content in there, and then that content will show up on every tiddler. Yeah, You're a mid -term. What time is it? Nine thirty one. Class is over. Um, but it's so close to not mass editing, but mass producing in a sense. So every tiddler that has those characteristics will look like that. But you haven't touched the contents of one of them. Okay. So when I think of editing, I think of changing the content. And so when you said mass editing tiddlers, I heard, what I heard is that you were going to open up a bunch of tiddlers and change their contents. There you go. Yes. That's, and you see that that's a big difference. You don't think so? Um, you don't think that's a big difference. That's a huge difference. Because you're, I think you're thinking of these tiddlers as static objects once you're done with them. I'm, I'm thinking of comparing this, this mass appearance changing to mass editing if you are able to change the content of multiple tiddlers. From the perspective of the writer or the perspective of the reader? What do you think? I think I'm leaving, he says. I'm still like, <laughs> I'm still under, I still don't get how the web is performance media. I'm still in construction. You still don't see the web. You, you, you think, yeah. Huh? Jeremy's on? Jeremy, hello. How are you? How you doing? Good, thank you. Um, always fun when I come on and look over your shoulder and see what you're doing. <laughs> were, were you there for the, our discussion of the web as performance media? Nope. Um, but I, I came in just for, just for you uh, mentioning it, though. That okay. sounds intriguing. I'm trying to... I think I'm trying to convince Kira that using a template is not the same as mass editing tiddlers that are responsive to that template. I acted with 
see it for. Mass editing Tiddlers is not the same as editing a single template that affects all of those Tiddlers. Right. Yeah. There's a kind of multiplying thing going on where you can make a single edit and it has multiple impacts. But it's the challenge is to understand that, that they're not mass editing. Wait, I've got it. They are mass, it is mass editing tipplers if you do this. If you were to create your wiki and use it as a production tool using templates and then save it as a static HTML file, yeah. Every is its own HTML page, then you would have successfully or conceptually and actually mass edited all the tiddlers when they were represented yeah. as HTML objects. So perhaps it's the semantics of what we mean by editing. We could mean editing the raw wiki text, or we could mean creating a new version of the text, the static output text that we're producing. Yes. Did that um, make sense to you, Kira, or did I lose you there? No, that's very good. Can I share my screen with you? I've got yes, something please. to show you. And yes. no, I know you cool. no, I was just wondering if I lost Kira because I can look at her and oh. see that I'm losing her, but that's okay. So when you save, and we haven't talked about, did I stop my share? How do I yeah, stop? Stop your share and then I can share. In the yeah, I, um, new share, how do I stop my share? Stop share. Yeah. There we go. Um, thanks. Oh, I should turn on my video even though I'm not sitting in front of the camera. There's no camera on this computer. Okay. Um, I'll open up my laptop so I'll have a face to the screen. Um, so.